Well, hello there and welcome to Deeply Rooted. I am your host, Robin Norgren, and this podcast is um, examining all forms of uh, the ways in which we want to live more fully in the world and in our lives personally. Um, I explore topics that have to do with creativity, uh, with the Montessori philosophy, with the meaning of life, and just with being us more uh, spiritual and being connected with our spirituality, because we are spiritual beings longing to live out our human experiences in a more deep and rewarding way. Welcome to the podcast. Time to act on your plans. Edgar Allan Poe says, They who dream by day are cognizant of many things which escape those who dream only by night. Write down three dreams that you have right now. What do those dreams have in common? And how close are you to making them a reality? Choose one of them and create a mind map to success. Moving it in one month increments and see what you can do to progress in this dream in one year. Here's another idea from the book called The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. This one is called Look Up and Then Look Farther Up. Alice Twemlow says, We spend so much time looking down at our phones or our feet, and even just from side to side into store windows, that it's a good idea to remind ourselves to look up towards the tops of buildings. There, this is where garlands and griffons gather below eaves and the residue of old advertising signage lingers. And actually, that is one of my favorite things to do is to find old signage and to photograph it. Um, so if you've ever had um, just an inkling to do something like that, I bet you would have a great time and it would open your eyes to so much of the old, quote, retro, unquote, things that we have still living around us. So let's hear what he has to say about look up and then look further up. Every year, at least one of my students hits on some variations of the idea that if you want to notice things you missed in the past, then up is a good place to explore. For starters, you can simply look up from your phone from time to time. Lift your eyes to what's not right in front of you, but just above. The design writer Alice Twembo, whom I got to know after she founded what became the School of Visual Arts Design Research graduate program, points out that there's a good reason so many people who think about attention suggest that taking a moment to look up can be powerful, because it's true. Uh, That's a great start, but Twemlo has another thought, looking farther up. If you look farther up and you really have to crank your head back for this, which means slowing way down and stopping moving altogether to the roofs themselves, she says, you might glimpse drying, drying washing being whipped by the wind, a flock of pigeons homing, prisoners playing basketball in a fenced-in yard, or someone secretly sunbathing in between the jagged teeth of water towers, chimneys, and aerials. Up is a place that might be glimpsed while in motion. Farther up requires the suspension of movement and activity. My favorite is to count chimneys, suggests the designer and writer Ingrid Fittell-Lee. Looking for chimneys 
raises your gaze, which seems to boost your mood, possibly because it lets more light into the eye. But it also makes you look at a completely different part of a city or town. You become aware of the way the land meets the sky, the various ways that roofs are built, and the wildlife living up in the rafters and the treetops. Editor and writer Sarah Rich once said to me, I'd say one visual experience I have more now is seeing birds and planes way high in the sky, which requires looking up for a while. It's sort of like daytime satellite spotting. The farther up you look, the more time it takes to see anything. Find a place to sit or lie down and look up. Take your time. See what's up there. Then look for what's beyond that. Here's part two of the meditation called the Beloved Meditation. It is a prayer created by, Ar by Arthur LeClaire. And yesterday, in our podcast, we sat for 10 minutes meditating on the words, Jesus, you are the Beloved. Today, we're going to gently and without fanfare, move on to another 10 minutes. So you can begin with these 10 minutes, or you can take what I say here and do the same thing with the phrase, Jesus, you are the beloved. But those who did this yesterday, or the last podcast, you may do, Jesus, you are the beloved for 10 minutes. And then this time, Say, Jesus, I am the beloved. So let me prepare you. Sit relaxed and at ease. Have confidence that God's love will show itself in some way. For the first 10 minutes, without fuss, say the following words slowly and fervently. Jesus, you are the beloved. Repeat the words as necessary. Mm -hmm. Let your heart fill with nonverbal praise and thanksgiving. Let distractions float by even when they, pass upon, they press upon you. After a while, the distractions will seem less and less urgent as you let them go. Simply be with Jesus in this precious moment. Then gently and without fanfare, move on to the next 10 minutes. Paul reminds us in Romans 9.25 that we too are destined to become the beloved. Another color is added to the beauty of this scene. Jesus, I am the beloved. Jesus, I am the beloved. Let your core being soak up God's favor. At first, this shift might seem jarring. But rest in the depth of prayer and let this truth settle in. Then go on, sit in it for 10 minutes. Jesus, I am the Beloved. <laughs>